Sunny Sweet Corn. Sweet Corn Husky Yellow Sweet Corn Tasty Mellow Kernels in a can They were put there by the green man Hello everybody, I'm Sam and today I'm in West Sussex at a farm which grows lots of fruit and vegetables including the one we're going to learn all about today, sweet corn. This is our guide for today, this is John. John, thank you for having us Hello, on the farm. Hello, pleasure. Um, have you been growing sweet corn for long? Uh, a huge amount of time actually. I think the very first time we had sweet corn I was six years of age and I'm 36 now so that gives you an idea, it's a long time ago. A long, long time. Yeah. So how much sweet corn do you grow per year? Um, we grow uh, in the UK season, okay, which is a part of what we do, we grow 30 million cobs. What? Did yeah, I hear that right? It's huge, yeah. But that's, that's, <laughs> that's only half of what we grow across the world, we grow 60 million cobs, that's a lot of sweet corn. That's crazy. And you grow other fruit and veg as well, don't you? So what do you grow? We do. We, we specialise in really different uh, vegetables. We don't actually grow any fruit, folks, but uh, we grow things like uh, sweet potato, butternut squash, asparagus, chilies, you know, fun things. All my favourites. Okay. <laughs> well, I think you're the perfect person to, uh, to teach us about sweet corn today on this online field trip. What are we going to learn, though? What are you going to be teaching us? Well, we're going to learn all about sweet corn plants. They are absolutely fantastic plant. We're going to learn how they grow and uh, the part of the, the, the world where, where, where we grow them from, I guess. And I guess how we get them from this field to all the shops. Well, that's very important because if we just grew it here, it would never get to you. So, yeah, we've got to take it through the whole of what we call the supply chain of getting it from the farm into uh, the lorries and into your local stores. Lovely, ready for us to eat. Right, let's meet the schools that we have taking part today. Let's go to Ben Weavis Primary School now, where Miss Hamilton's class is taking part. Hello, children. <laughs> Lots of lovely smiley faces and ways there. Let's go over to uh, the Bishop's Primary School in Newquay where Mr Cornish's class is taking part. Hello children, hello Mr Cornish. <laughs> Fantastic. And finally let's go over to Tateley School in Dunmo where Miss Griffiths' class is taking part. Hello yeah. children. <laughs> hello. Takely School, it's lovely to have you taking part again because we know you took part last week in our field trip. And thank you so much for the lovely video you sent us as well to say thank you for, mm. for allowing you to take part. They learned all about honey and bees last week. So wow. it's honey and bees and uh, sweet corn today. Sweet corn today. Sweet corn today. Uh, before we uh, continue learning about sweet corn, I think the best place to start is to learn a little bit more about the, uh, the family of plants that sweet corn comes from because sweet corn is a variety of maize. And maize, I understand, John, is, is the thing that we grow the most of across the world more than any other grain, plant or flower or vegetable. That, that's correct. In fact, that, that's a fact that you, you've just told me. Now, <laughs> Uh, sweet corn is not originally from uh, Britain or Europe, it came from South America, it's a very exotic plant and as you can see we're, we're now we're stood in a, in a big field of sweet corn and uh, if you look at what the, what the plant looks like, it's a very tall plant, it's slightly taller than me so it's over six foot tall, okay, and it has something at the top which is called the male flower and on the sweet corn itself it has a female flower and this is what makes it really different from most other crops that just have female flowers and then the bees come and pollinate them, sweet corn pollinates itself. It's a fantastic thing and I Lovely. guess that's, that's what makes it able to be grown around the world because it's quite simple. Yeah, and all the other maize products. We have the maize products on the table here. So could you talk us through some of the, the maize products that we have here? And in the classrooms, you should have some different types of maize products as well. So pass them around, take a look at the different types. I'm sure that you're going to recognise some of them. They'll be in your, your cupboards at the kitchen, in, in the kitchen at home as well. So pass those around take a look. Um, so what do we have here then John? Well it's amazing really <laughs> um, how, how many products you can actually make out of sweet corn from things like you're probably more aware of your popcorn when you go to the cinema you know this this stuff here okay that's popping corn and that's made from dried out sweet corn kernels which as you can see are here so that's something you'll probably really be aware of um, in terms of sweet corn you'll probably have it home or maybe on your pizzas or maybe on the side of your plate with some of your meals you'll have this stuff here which is prepared sweet corn, it's been cooked and the kernels have been taken off and it's been put in a tin for your convenience. It's fantastic, you can eat this really easily. A little baby ones. Ah, little baby ones there, yeah. So these things here, this is, for me, this is like the ultimate designer veg really. It's picked off the plant when it's really young and really tender. Um, it's not bad actually. Mm. It's pretty good for stir fries and that sort of thing. Really big in Asia, Chinese food, Thai food, that sort of thing. 
and then the full co-op experience, which this is how we grow them here. Can everyone see these? Yeah, everyone's got these? Okay. And when you peel them back, you can see what's inside. Absolutely fantastic looking, yellow, gorgeous, sweet, Lovely. tender cob. I really want to eat it actually. Yeah, me too. We might, we might mm. get a bit more up close and personal with the corn on the cob a little bit later on. So these are all different types of maize. And so maize obviously is really important for food for humans, but mm. it's an important food for animals as well, isn't it? That's right. Maize in its purest form, uh, or field corn as it's known in America, is really about feeding the cattle and feeding the chickens and all the, you know, the, the milk you get and the, and the, and the meat you get uh, from the supermarkets and maybe from your butcher as well, that has to be fed by something. So maize is a really important feed for animals. But when we feed it to ourselves, we don't really like the kind of the maize uh, flavor of things. Maize can be a little bit starchy, not so sweet, maybe a little bit chewy. So we've developed through our really clever breeding programs, sweet corn that tastes and crunch is really nice. It's almost like a fruit, it's that good. So it eats a lot better, and that's why humans like it. So the animals don't mind the, the bland taste, whereas we like it nice and sweet. Absolutely. And can you run, a little birdie yeah. told me you can run cars and buses using maize. Yeah, believe it or not, yeah. I mean, the high sugar level inside the, the sweet corn, inside the corn on the cob, can be taken from that and turned into ethanol, which can be used as an alternative to fossil fuels. So petrol and diesel, if you're thinking those sorts of things. And alternatively, Maize can also be put through what is known as an anaerobic digestion process. I'm getting a little bit scientific here, but it's basically turned into gas. Okay, the sweet corn breaks down, it, it, it mold takes over, it breaks down, and that gas is captured. And then that gas is put through into engines that, 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 that drive uh, combined heat and power units. And they can actually make cars work and lorries and tractors. So it's a really sustainable, environmentally clean way of creating an alternative energy source. That's wow. right. So maize is incredible. In fact, we have a video now. Let's watch a video, our very first video, mm. all about how amazing maize really is. Amazing maize. Did you know that sweet corn comes from a family of plants called maize, which is why they look the same? Some varieties of maize, like sweet corn, are also eaten as a vegetable, freshly picked from the plant. People have been growing maize since prehistoric times. It was first grown in a part of the world that we now call Latin America. Today, farmers grow it all over the world. In fact, we grow more maize than any other kind of crop, more than rice or wheat. We grow so much maize because we use it to feed both humans and animals. And we also use the oil to make a fuel called ethanol for cars, buses and trucks. Maize plants grow from seeds. The seed of a maize plant is called a kernel. The kernels grow on a cob. Each cob of maize has as many as 600 kernels on it. Each kernel can grow into a new maize plant. Some varieties of maize can grow up to be 2.5 metres tall. That's the same height as a crossbar on a football goal. The kernels on a maize plant are also used for food. Did you know popcorn is also a variety of maize? To make popcorn, dried kernels are heated until they explode, forming fluffy pieces of popcorn. Another type of maize is dried and then ground up into flour to make corn flour and cornmeal. The flakes of yet another variety are used to make a breakfast favourite, corn flakes. All these foods are made from maize. That's why we call it Amazing Maize. Fantastic. So maize really is marvellous and it actually grows really, really high, John, doesn't it? It's crazy. So um, you may be able to see behind us, there's a, a bit of marvellous machinery on its way up behind us. I'm hoping it's going to stop, John. We're going to uh, take a close look when it gets to us. Um, but beforehand, I know you've all been learning about sweet corn in your classrooms before today. So I think it's about time that we put your knowledge to the test. So let's go over to one of our schools now. Let's go over to Ben Weavis School, uh, where Miss Hamilton's class has some uh, sweet corn facts. Who have you got for us, Miss Hamilton? Hello, everybody from Ben Weavis. Our first uh, child is Tyler. My fact is, I have learned that sweet corn comes from a lot of different countries, like Brazil, Mexico, America, and Argentina, and a lot more. Wow, fantastic. Yes, yeah, so 
Um, we've got a fact there that um, sweet corn comes from lots of different countries like Brazil, Argentina, yeah. Mexico, so not just here in the UK. That's correct, yeah. Sweet corn is grown all over the world, yeah. Nice fact. Okay, do we have another fact, Miss Hamilton? Yes, we do. We've now got strewn in. My fact is that the fruit is called kernel and the kernel is the bit we eat. Great. Okay, that's a great fact. Mm. So the um, kernel is the bit that we eat. Yes. And uh, we've got the, the husk at the bottom, haven't we? We have. The that's husk right. is there, the green leaves. Yeah. Yes, and so we actually eat the kernel. That's a great fact. One more fact, Miss Hamilton. Yep, yeah, now we've got Rosie. I learned that corn has a different name called maize. Fantastic. Great fact from Rosie there. Uh, corn has a different name from maize. That's good, yeah. yeah. Well, well observed, yeah. Fantastic. Lovely, lovely facts there. Um, so at the machines coming up behind us now, as you can see, um, I can just see lots of things shooting, shooting out of the, the machine, John. What, what's happening? And we'll have a closer look when it comes to us. Well, that's a great way of taking all of the leaves and all of the things that, that aren't the sweet corn cob and putting it back on the soil because what the soil likes is compost. So instead of bringing that back to the factory where we would have to deal with that waste, we leave it in the field and it's used as compost for the, the soil to make it healthy for the next year. And so how often would you do this and how long have the uh, plants that have been growing been, been growing for? Okay, well our sweet corn cropping season in Britain, because of our limitations of weather, we get lots of rain, it's not always very warm here, are between August and September. So this crop of sweet corn will only be grown once. It takes 90 days to grow. That's really important. It's quite a long crop. So it really will only be growing here this year once. Oh, fantastic. And so it seems to be kind of going quite quickly. So how many cobs could it pick in, say, an hour? Or... Oh, it's very, very hungry. It's a real muncher and it moves very, very quickly. So you don't want to be stood too close to it when it gets it. So we've got to hurry this up. Um, it will probably pick over, uh, so look, we'll do 10 acres an hour. And every acre we have about uh, 10,000. So uh, maybe it'll do 100,000, 100,000 cobs, maybe an hour. That's, that's pretty good, yeah. And we've got six of these, wow. so we're busy. Wow, yes. And so I'm guessing there's some kind of chopping mechanism. How do you make sure the cobs don't get damaged? Um, th yeah, it's all, all down to a, uh, science again, okay? But we've developed, we've engineered a, a set of little tickling fingers. Well, they're kind of big metal tickling fingers, really, <laughs> that are on the front. I'm getting really nervous now. It's coming at me. <laughs> and it tickles the sweet corn off into the hopper. And as it goes back, it gets partially graded, so the small stuff falls out, the big stuff stays, and, uh, and then all the, the, what we call the chaff gets blown out the side. Is it coming? It is coming. Um, will the driver stop? Is he, is he a trusted driver? Um, Sergo and I are friends. I, okay. I'm sure he's going to stop. Okay. But if he doesn't, we're going to end up in the back of the hopper. So tell us what it's like when you're driving one of these. As a pheasant. Did you see that? Ooh. That's nature. <laughs> It's like driving the Starship Enterprise. You're surrounded by touch screens, little iPad apps that you can control the speed, you can control the size of the corn you're taking, you can control the elevation. It's linked into a satellite, so if you accidentally fall asleep, it'll keep driving. We try not to let them fall asleep. You don't know what you might be bringing in. <laughs> but it's, it's very, very technical, and it takes over six months to train a driver. Wow. Should we have a closer look? Can we walk back and take yeah, a look? Yeah, thank goodness he stopped. Actually. Let's have a little walk down. Wow, so I can see these like pointy fingers that you, you mentioned. Yeah, the tickling fingers. Yeah, the tickling fingers. Here they are, look. Wow. Okay, so if you bring the camera in closer, we can have a little sh shoot at the profile. Hi, sir, guy, don't run me over. <laughs> yeah, we're friends, yeah? Okay. Um, these here effectively just very wow. gently pull, pluck the, the, the cobs off the sweet corn plant and then they go through the roller at the back, okay, which lets all the small stuff go, and then it's hoovered up through the middle, and it goes up a conveyor belt, up behind where Sergei is sat now, and again, even more small stuff is pushed out the side, and then the, the, the composting, what we call the chaff blower, blows all of the, the stuff that's cut that isn't required out onto the field for, for compost. It's fascinating. Does it have a, a special name, John, or is it just the big machine that well, cuts these, corn? These guys, <laughs> these guys have got <laughs> nicknames for them. Um, okay. We've got quite a few of them. We have some with a, the pirate's flag. Those people in Cornwall might appreciate the humour in this. One is the pirate, and he thinks he's the best driver. Sergei, <laughs> Sergei just keeps it really, really tight. He's also known as the meerkat. 
So he likes to just, you know, drive really <laughs> steady, make sure he gets a good yield, make sure he doesn't use too much fuel, because these things can burn through a lot of fuel. So the key thing is driving it at a really steady rate so we're not wasting any resources and we can grow as efficiently as possible to keep the costs down because we want you guys to be eating as much sweet corn as possible. We don't want it to be too expensive. Fantastic. Are you not driving it on, on uh, maize, are you? Uh, too big for maize? It's an interesting fact. This, this head here, what we call the picking head, has been developed to tickle corn off. The maize cutting head is very different. It's just like a big lawnmower that just has its blade and rather than mulch everything out, it mulches everything in and then that gets taken back for cattle feed, okay, or whatever people want to do with the maize. Great, so everything's used really? That's everything's great. used and it's all about quality, getting qu absolute quality sweet corn, corn on the cob to you guys, so that when you eat it in a restaurant or when you take it home and put it on your barbecue, you get the best experience. Lovely, well I'm asking all the questions. I think it's time that our school's got an opportunity to ask you some questions, John. So let's go to the Bishop's Primary School now, um, where Mr Cornish's class is taking part. Do we have any questions, Mr Cornish? Yes. Yes, we do. Um, this is Amelia. Amelia, come to the front. Hello, Amelia. Kneel down. That's it, and ask your question. How long does the corn take to grow? Great question, Amelia. How long does the corn take to grow, John? 90 days. But we've had really good weather this year, so actually it's taken 80 days. So it's taken 10 days less, which is very good for us. When you say good weather, is it the sunshine you need? or You, do you need, need yeah, absolutely. Rain? You need lots and lots and lots of sunshine. Sweet corn loves sunshine. The more sunshine you get, and you can measure this, this is called lumens, now the technological fact, the higher the lumens, the higher the sugar content of the corn. Oh. So you want great weather for the sweetest sweet corn, which makes the best eating experience. Lovely. Great question. Do we have another question, Mr Cornish? Yes, um, this is Chloe. Hello, Chloe. Hello. <laughs> Why does the sweet corn digest? Can you repeat that again, Chloe? Go a lot closer. Why doesn't sweet corn digest? Why doesn't sweet corn digest, John? That's a really good question. You know, there was always going to be someone asking this question. <laughs> uh, again, I've got to become technical. Sweet corn is full of something called cellulose, okay? Now, the goodness of the sweet corn is inside the kernel, okay? The little yellow thing that we spoke about earlier on. But that yellow skin, also called the pericarp, I told you I'd be technical, is made of cellulose, okay? And that's a very good thing naturally for you. It's good fiber, it goes through your system, it keeps a very healthy uh, uh, intestinal system, your gut needs, needs fiber, okay? But quite often it comes out the other side. And uh, we don't need to go into detail about that, I think we all know exactly what I'm talking about. Next question, Mr. Gornish, do you have another one? Uh, this is Megan. Hello, Megan. <laughs> what are the best growing conditions? Great question, Megan. Uh, what are the best growing conditions, John, for sweet corn? Well, do you know what, Megan? That is a very good question because here we stand in one of the best crops of sweet corn that we have grown all year. These guys are lucky. They've arrived on the right day. And half an hour ago, it was raining. Okay, so the crop likes to have a good drink. And that means that the roots can soak it up and the big corn on the cobs can soak up that water and become really juicy, really thick. Okay, so it needs that water. But the thing you see in this particular field is it's all sand. Uh, the, the soil here is incredible. I mean, you, you won't be able to see it now from the camera, but it loves that sand because it means the roots can get down into the, deep down in, and it can build a strong plant. And if you have a strong plant with lots of sunshine, enough water, you know what you're gonna get? You're gonna get great corn. What do you do if you don't have any rain? Do you, do you have to water them? Uh, well, we do a, a rain dance. Sometimes <laughs> when we don't have enough rain, it's quite a serious thing actually, <laughs> joking aside. And we have had situations in the past where we've, uh, you know, we've had to make a decision. We, do, we, do we save the early crop or do we save the late crop? If we don't have enough rainwater, we have to call upon our reserves. And what we do is we dig, you know, we, we have this around the farm. You won't see this again today, but we have massive reservoirs. They're really, really huge. You know, you could sort of swim across them or have a little boat on them. And we pump water from them, okay? We pump it out onto the fields. And sweet corn loves water, loves to drink. So if you don't have any water, you're not going to have a good crop. Oh, that's a really great question. Have you got one more question there? Um, how much sweet corn did it did you grow last year? Great question. How much sweet corn did you grow last year, John? A little bit more than the year before. A little bit less than this year. No, every year we try and grow more sweet corn. We try and make sure that all of the, the supermarkets across the country and all the grocery stores have our fantastic sweet corn. And quite often if we do a really good job and we deliver real quality, the next year it grows because more people want to eat. I mean, there must be people in your classroom that have had a couple of really good cobs this year and maybe you're asking your mum and dad, well, can we have some more of this please? 
And, and so we have to fulfill that demand. So next year I'll be growing about 15% more. That means 15% more land. That means 15% more people operating. That means, you know, probably might need to get another one of these to, you know, to keep up with it, to harvest it in time. But we, every year we're aiming for growth. Every, every year, okay? Fantastic. Talking about growing, we've got another video now. Yeah. And this is all about how sweet corn grows. Sweet corn, from farm to fork. Sweet corn is a type of maize. We can eat it fresh on the cob, from a tin, or cooked from frozen. Sweet corn is a seasonal plant. That means it only grows at certain times of year. It grows from a seed, called a kernel, that is planted into the fields during the spring months of April or May. With plenty of sunshine and water, the plants grow tall very quickly. After around 15 weeks, the plant produces small cobs on the stems with long silks that look like hair. A flower is produced at the top of the plant. As the wind blows, the pollen from the flower falls onto the silks. This is how sweet corn is pollinated and how the cobs begin to grow. The cobs of sweet corn are ready to be picked in July, August or September when the sweet corn plants have grown to be around two metres tall. At the farm, they use these big machines to harvest the sweet corn. The machine cuts the stems and then separates the cobs from the rest of the plant. This machine can harvest as many as 50,000 cobs of sweet corn per hour. Sweet corn contains natural sugars, and that's why it tastes so sweet. As soon as it is picked, the sugars begin to turn to starch, which doesn't taste as nice. So it's important that sweet corn is harvested and processed quickly. Some of the fresh cobs are packed and sent to store, ready for you to cook. Some are sent to factories to go into tins. And some are sent to be frozen. So when you eat them, you have many yummy ways to enjoy the taste and goodness of sweet corn. Great, and absolutely fantastic to see that amazing machine in action as well. So, John, are you ready for a few more questions? We're going over to another school now. Let's go over to Takeley School now, uh, where Miss Griffiths' class have some questions for you. Who do we have, Miss Griffith? Hi. I am Isaac. Hi, I'm Isaac. Hello. In our school garden, do you have any advice for us? Oh, great question. They have some sweet corn in their garden. Do you have any advice? Yes. Uh, make sure you pick it when it's really ripe and make sure you eat it quickly to really enjoy that experience. That's the key. Yeah, because it, it's quite hard to... You can sometimes pick it and it seems like it lasts a long time, but I think that the earlier you eat it, the better. Yeah, straight from the plant. That's the best. Yes. Yes, well lovely. done for growing it, by the way. Good on you. Yeah, You're very gonna good. You're going to put me out of business one day. Maybe you want a job. <laughs> Phone me up. <laughs> Do we have another question for John? My name's Olive. Do you have a favourite way to eat sweet corn? Oh, great question, John. Um, do you have a favourite way to eat sweet corn? <laughs> um, I, do you know what? I've discovered a new way of having sweet corn, which is really simple. If you don't have a barbecue or the weather's not good, you just take the whole thing and you put it in the oven. You might have to ask your mummy or daddy about this, but then you just turn it up to 230 and you wait for 15 minutes. And you'll see something very interesting happen. It all goes black and then you turn it down and you bring it out and it's all blackened and you open it up and it's steamed inside. So you get the barbecue Ooh. experience in the oven at home. Fantastic. And someone taught me that when I was in uh, Mexico recently on a, trying to find some more sweet corn, funnily enough. And that was a really cool way of, um, of eating it. So try that at home, actually. Yeah, of course, as uh, John said, ask mummy and daddy first. Um, OK, uh, another question for John. Is sweet corn always the same shape? Good question. Is sweet corn always the same shape, John? No, it's not, actually. It all depends on the variety. So we've grown specific varieties in this farm to look like this. So when it gets home to you, you can open it up and you know you can have that experience. But I've seen sweet corn this big and this fat. And quite oh. often that goes into cans. That's the stuff they prepare for the canning industry or the freezing industry. When you buy the small little niblets that are in the frozen section at the retailer, okay, or at, the, you know, at your local store, 
Um, but the, the cobs we grow are this big because I think if we had them any bigger, you'd get full. You wouldn't want many more. You wouldn't better eat them all, would you? So they have to be kind of sort of, you know, grown to be a certain size. That's a meal in itself, that big, big one, it, I think. It is a meal in itself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can we <laughs> have right. uh, one last question, please, from Takely School? My name's Amelia. Is sweet corn always yellow? Very good question, Amelia. Is sweet corn always yellow, John? No, that's a really good question, actually. Um, in America, in the United States, they like to have white corn because it distinguishes the difference between maize, which is yellow, and the sort of the, the, the sweet corn we were discussing earlier, the super sweet, tender sweet human uh, corn on the cob. And so in America, the preference is for white corn. And we've also been playing around over the last couple of years with naturally bringing in different colorations. And we've actually made a blue and white one, a red and white one, a red and blue one, a purple one. Wow. And this stuff, you know, it's, it's all naturally bred, um, which, is, which is very important looking after nature. So it's done naturally. And it will be really good fun because you'll be able to have sweet corn in, in your football colors or something. And maybe then you'll even eat more of it. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Thank you so much for your questions. What great questions there, John. Um, I think it's time that we take a closer look at a, a proper corn now. Mm. And you all should have uh, your own cobs in your classroom. So you should have one each with the leaves around and with the silk still attached as well. So as John is talking us through the, the cobs that we have here and taking them apart, why don't you do the same in your classroom so you can have a good look at what he's talking about. So John, if you take us through each section of the, of the corn, okay, please. Okay, cool. Right, so sweet corn, we've obviously seen the, the harvester with Sergei, okay? That's what Sergei takes from the field. And this comes into our business, which isn't far down the road. It's about 20 minutes or so. The lorries come in all the time and we empty it at the yard and it comes through a factory. And in that factory, we process it, okay? And this is basically what happens. They take off the outer leaves and they take off the, the, the stem here, which is known as the shank, and they, they pinch out the silks, which are these bits here. And then that goes into, into a nice supermarket tray which goes onto a lorry, which gets to the supermarket, which is great. Now, there's another part of our factory which turns these into these, okay? Now, what this is, this is, a, if you like, a, a washed and ready to cook product, okay? So it's been completely uh, stripped. So in effect, we've taken this, we've completely, oh, it's quite tough, as what you can are see. The, what are these silks for? Ah, they, silks. they got a purpose? Well, yeah, they do have a purpose, actually. Um, Every single one of these kernels, mm -hmm. okay, has one of these attached to it. Oh, wow. Okay? So inside of the, the husk, you have these little hairs which are connected to every single one of the kernels, okay? Now, this is where Mother Nature does her part. You might remember at the start of the conversation, we spoke about the male flower at the top, and then we spoke about the female flower on the plant at the bottom. This is known as the silk, okay? The male flower in the wind does his bit. Sweet corn doesn't need bees, actually. It's quite an interesting thing. It just, just does. By, by air, it pollinates by air, okay? And then once this silk has been pollinated, it transmits a message down to each one of the kernels, okay? Which makes it go yellow and fertilizes it. If it's not fertilized properly, and this, this is a very good crop of corn because every single one I'm grabbing is demonstrating that it's been fertilized lovely, you might just be able to see this one. That's a, a, a kernel that hasn't been fertilized. Okay, like so, a tiny little white. Let me yeah. turn it around just there. Incredible, just in there. There we okay. go. So you'll see this tiny little strand, this tiny little hair actually has a really important role to play. Great, okay. and the leaves protect it, I guess, from the, the weather and make it make sure everything in, is inside is fresh. Is that yeah. what the job of the leaves Absolutely. are? Absolutely, they protect it from, from, you know, from predators because there's predators in this field, little bugs that want to eat the sweet, sweet corn and they can't get in because the leaves are like the, you know, like it's protection. And what about the, is it the husk at the bottom? The, 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 the bit at the bottom, the very yes, bottom? Sir. Yeah, that there. Yeah. What's, yeah, what's the job of that, the, the well, tough bit? This connects it to the plant, okay? Okay. So, in effect, this is, its, this is where the water comes from. This is, this is where it gets its nutrition from, through here, okay? Okay. And that goes up into the sweet corn. So, it's no need for bees, works. no need for pollination, it, it does its own That's thing? That's right, it does its own thing and it pollinates in the wind, correct. Fantastic. And so, the sweet corn that you grow here, we would see in the supermarket as lots of different forms. So, we'd see it as fresh, yep. we'd see it as tinned, and yep. then we'd I guess see it as frozen as well. You'll see it as frozen, you'll see it as popcorn, you'll see it as you know, dried uh, kernels which you can pop at home. You might have those little microwave bags, that's what's inside them, okay? And this one here is baby corn which we sort of you know, create for you know, special kind of restaurant or stir fry kind of occasions. You might have seen this in your, you know, your Chinese meals if you, 
if you like Chinese food. Corn, it is very, very tasty, but very good for you as well, because uh, three heaped tablespoons of corn or a cob um, is the equivalent of one of your five fruit and vegetables a day. It's also a source of protein as well, which makes it good for your strong bones and muscles. So I've enjoyed my sweet corn over time, but there's, there's you know, there's other vegetables out there, children. Um, you, and in my view, you probably need to have a, a, a widespread of vegetables. You need to have the green ones, the orange ones, the yellow ones. Have the broadest colours you can possible for your best health. Fantastic. I think we've learnt so much about sweet corn today. Let's go over to Bishop's Primary School now to find out what you enjoyed the most. My name is Jennifer and um, we've learnt that um, sweet corn can come in lots of different sizes. Great. OK, so sweet corn comes in lots of different shapes and sizes. Yes, it does, yeah. That's a ba really Baby ones to big ones. That's a really great fact. Can we go over to Tateley School and find out um, what you enjoyed the most? My name's Alyssa. I've learned that sweet corn comes in different colours. That sweet corn comes in different colours. That's a really great fact that we learned as well. It's really, really good. Um, we're about to go, but one last question for you, John. What's your favourite thing about working with sweet corn? Um, the chance to work out in the, in the environment, I think. You know, I, I have a, a team of people, we work in an office, we do all the planning and the management, but actually one of the best things in my job is I get to come out to places like this. And also we grow corn all over the world, so I get to go there as well. And I kind of feel like in a small way, like the man from Del Monte, so it's a nice thing to do. I really enjoy it. It Traveling. is great. It's re I'm very jealous because this is an amazing place it's really nice and the sun's come out for us it's very <laughs> thank hot, you so actually. much for having us here John, and thank you so much children for taking part we hope you've enjoyed learning all about sweet corn on today's online field trip and don't forget after this online field trip has finished you can have lots more fun learning about maize why don't you give this maize a go and see what happens when you do heat it at home make sure you've got an adult with you um, and read the instructions as well but enjoy your popcorn also enjoy um, boiling and eating your corn on the cob and if you like john and i put a nice bit of butter on nice and enjoy that as well i mean if you'd like to take part on uh, a field trip and go to a, a participating farm or factory you can do that um, just take a look at these children having so much fun uh, learning all about where their food comes from everything you need to know is online um, and but bye from me and John from West Sussex. Bye bye. 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 Goodbye everybody, thanks for taking part. <laughs>